Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm the Accidental Brewer. Um, and there isn't a this the, this time, so don't don't have the other Accidental Brewer here. Um, we're gonna do the Fruit Punch Mead uh, check-in. We're just gonna check and make sure that uh, the mead's going as it's supposed to. There's no funky stuff happening. And I've got everything prepped. As you can notice, I've already taken all the stuff off up here, but I haven't actually opened it up to see what's going on inside yet. So let's just get right to it. Well, it definitely was an active fermentation, just in case you were curious. It had blown up a little bit into the airlock and I had to switch the airlock out at least once. Um, so. Want to see how much has fermented out of this this time see where we are and then possibly transfer it to uh, other vessels maybe put some spices in it to spice things up I don't know yet um, it looks like it's gone down significantly so It is at one dot oh oh one one dot oh oh two. It is like you know almost completely fermented all the sugars out, which is good. Um, I'm not sure exactly where that would put it. Um, it was at one dot one two five, so that's like almost 18%, 16%, somewhere around 16% 6, something like that. Ooh, that is um, very tart. And I know I'm gonna end up having to split it between two vessels, but what I'm wondering is should I do something like, um, cause I'm gonna have to definitely back sweeten this. This needs a little bit of back sweetening. It's a little bit too bitter because of the fruit that's been in it. I also think it needs some spices and maybe a couple other things. So what I am going to do, um, it does have a nice mouthfeel. I don't think I need to add any um, acid blend to it cause it's got a nice acid to it. Yeah, so I'm gonna get another bucket, <laughs> put it together, and that bucket is gonna be the first bucket that we transfer over to. And then we'll be right back in a moment, and you'll see what happened there. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, as you can see, I'm set up with the bottling bucket, and away we go. Wait a minute, and away what? Away we go. <laughs> started up okay we have now moved all of the um, fruit mead <laughs> over uh, I'm gonna place it on my scale 14 pounds interesting let's we'll see how much honey I'm gonna add uh, to give it the taste that I want so I'm gonna start with a pound and a half of clover honey uh, and I put this in sanitizer, just the bottle in sanitizer, dump it down in there to loosen up the honey. Um, and I just realized I'm making a huge mistake by using the lid. Um, I don't know why I was doing that. The honey will flow much better and probably much faster if I do it this way. Yep. Well, I set a pound and a half, and I may actually get a pound and two ounces out of this. Um, I thought there was a pound and a half left in there, but I have some more honey that I could use, so that's not a problem. What I am hoping is that this will just add 
a tiny bit of sweetness back and it won't ferment back out. Um, if it does, then I'll have to uh, look at that a little bit later. Um, but yeah. I'm also going to add one pod of star anise. Star anise. Star anise. I'm going to have one pot of that and uh, three cloves, three whole cloves and two cardamom pods to each of the jars that this is going to go into for a little bit of secondary aging. Um, and then we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, so I'm trying not to introduce much oxygen, if any at all, in this. And really what I'm trying to do is just back sweeten a bit with the honey that I introduced. It was 1.3 uh, ounces, so it's one pound and one point, or one pound three ounces of honey that I added. So not quite one and a half pounds. It would have been one pound eight ounces. Um, so, but it feels like there is some kind of honey on the bottom. So I am just trying to make this go smoothly. There's still some honey on the spoon and probably because this is cold, uh, but the honey was a bit warm. All right, so that took it up to 1.03. So I added about 30 points of gravity to this, which I think is good. Um, I imagine that I probably will lose a little bit of that gravity um, to fermentation. I'm gonna taste it real quick to see how it tastes. Now that brings back some nice honey character. It's um, light. I like it. Um, so definitely the right direction to go. As I touch my nose, I'm gonna pour this back in very gingerly without splashing. And I hear it splashing. Trying to get more of a lamellar flow. Should not have introduced really any oxygen there. Um, I do feel like um, I need to let it go and rest for a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and prepare this. To All right, so now we're going to put these actually in the, in the vessels that we're going to have for our secondary or um, conditioning phase of this depending on how, what school of thought you kind of move towards when it comes to it. I am going to try not to make a mess since I need to put this in two different vessels. Uh, I'm also going to introduce my spices to each mess vessel. This has a little bit of um, vodka in it. Uh, shouldn't really raise the ABV very much but that's how I sanitize these was by in a little bit of neutral spirit. Um, and Later. So uh, this is two gallons of fruit punch mead. Uh, having that taste in my mouth after uh, I tried some, it's got a very nice citrus fruit punch kind of aftertaste, which is just awesome. Um, I'm really looking forward to see how this will play out. It definitely does not taste like it's, um, you know, a, a 15 or 16 percent ABV mead. I will put that exactly how much it is right now since it went to almost dry, went down to 1.001. .001. Uh, I'll put that in um, the video notes or on the screen right somewhere like right here. Um, we have a Patreon and a Twitter and uh, all sorts of social media stuff that's going to be in the links down below. Please follow us or engage with us. We'd love that. Please subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified every time there's a new Accidental Brewer video. Otherwise, thank you.